There's a hidden corner of London where time has stood still. Step through the gates and you can journey through over 700 years of history. Welcome to the Charter House. This is the Great Chamber, the grandest room in the whole building. Now, it's been much altered over the years, but it was originally built in the 1570s, so it dates to the Tudor period. And when it was built, it was intended to be very much a public ceremonial space where the master of the house could entertain his elite visitors. The space fell into disuse during the 19th century, but it's recently been restored. It's hung with this amazingly impressive collection of portraits. These are all men from not the Tudor period, but the Restoration period. And they're all here because they were governors of the Charter House. They were also governors of the nation. Between them, these men represent the three clusters of power during the Restoration period. There was the crown, and we have here a king, King Charles II, who was the one who was restored. We have a collection of aristocrats, and some of these aristocrats were in Parliament, and that was the second centre of power. And the third centre of power was the church, so we also have several bishops in this gathering. Power during the Restoration period was very uncertain. The country had just come through a divisive and disturbing civil war during which the government had changed drastically. We'd experimented with being a republic and eventually decided to reintroduce the monarchy. The restoration of the monarchy was supposed to restore order and stability to government, but in fact a lot of the questions were not settled. The country remained bitterly divided and a lot of people had very different views about how the country should be governed. What they did unite on was thinking that the country needed to come together and create some form of civil government. One of the biggest debates about the period concerned religion. In particular, should religion define your civil rights? For example, there were some laws passed during this period that said that if you weren't a high church Anglican and you didn't conform to the Anglican ways of worship, you couldn't hold official office, you couldn't join the army, and you could even be fined by the state. So it was a very keen debate of the period and one that affected absolutely everybody in the land. And on the other hand, religion itself was coming under question from new discoveries to do with the emerging sciences. For example, Thomas Burnett, the master of the Charterhouse, wrote a book in which he suggested that the earth had been formed not by God working through miracles, but by God working through geological processes. And this was considered heretical at the time by some of the bishops. Now, of course, Burnett is considered to be the father of modern geology and even has a part of the moon named after him. Although they disagreed on these very important matters, the governors would have had to come together to the Charter House, sit in this room and try and agree amongst themselves over matters to do with the Charter House. Unfortunately, we don't have any detailed records of the discussions that went on when they were here. We do have formal minutes, but they only record the decisions that were made and were very, very brief. Some of these matters are very much settled now, such as the power of the monarchy, which we now know is limited by Parliament. But questions of religion are still with us today. We still have the situation in Northern Ireland where Catholic and Protestant communities have different cultural identities, and these divisions go back to the 17th century. We have other areas where people of different religion are considered to be other, like Islamophobia, anti-Semitism. These are always bubbling under. And there are other questions which trouble the restoration period, which is still with us. How can the state be inclusive? How can it include everybody in the laws that were made? And if people don't like the laws, how are they able to protest against it? One of the governors in this room, Monmouth, actually rose in rebellion at one point because he was so exercised by what was going on in the monarchy. 
And the room itself offers us some points of reflection about power today. In the 17th century, these were all men of power. Now we have women in government, but do women truly have the same equal power as men do? The Charter House has been living the nation's history for over 700 years. This room has seen many debates about power and the nation. Why don't you come and visit? Come to this room and make up your own mind. <laughs>